Hi there, I'm Black Bright, broadcasting out of the UK. And yes, I welcome to my channel. You can like, subscribe, share if you find it interesting. Otherwise, you can just leave a comment, tell me how I can improve it. And I can have a look at it and see if it's something that is within my remit to do. Anyway, today um, I was thinking about people who try not to look like a criminal. It's a, it's a, it's a dodgy topic, really, because um, it's difficult for black men, black youths to go on the street. And all the time they could be thinking, I don't want to attract attention. How can I not look like a criminal to the police? And that's how sometimes um, people think. Not everybody thinks that way, of course not. But, you know, you, could, you if you're driving a car, you see a car behind you, you're like, oh, please, God, don't let them stop me. They're driving beside you and they're looking in and you're like, please, God, let them just drive on, whatever it is. And sometimes, even if you look ordinary, you're still thinking to yourself, I wonder if a cop has had a bad day today and how can I not draw attention to myself? How can I not look like a criminal? Now, for young people, they you can't tell them what to wear from not what to wear. You tell them to wear a suit and tie, they'd laugh at you. You know, but there are certain things that you can do so that you don't look like the stereotype. The problem with the police and people who are racist is that they stereotype and they look at certain groups of people and assume that they, because of the way they are dressed, because of how they look, if they're in a group, that they're doing something that is against the law. So... What they say to people is, don't stand in groups, make sure you, you know, you, your parents will say, make sure you dress neatly, don't hang around with a lot of boys, come home straight after work, because the inference is, is that if you're on the street talking to friends, you're going to attract attention, you're going to be looking, you're going to look like criminals. And so inside, you know, for young people, kids they tend to be fearless it's the parents who tend to worry um, about what the child is doing and how the child is dressed now hang, those trousers that um, hang all the way down their trap down their their butts I don't know if they're fading out I don't see them so often now but maybe they're fading out I don't know if that is one of the signals that the police look for I don't think so I think you know, dark clothes for some reason attract attention, attract the attention of police. You know, men dressed in dark clothes. For some reason, they are, that is like a trigger for police. Oh, they must be up to no good if they're wearing dark clothes. I don't think they say it like that, but in their head, when they see them, especially when they have the hoods up. I mean, some of these guys, they look absolutely menacing. Have you seen the guys that have that scarf over their face? And then they have the hood. I mean, what is that about? I, I don't understand that at all. There's a group of guys that do that. They wear those scarves over their mouths and, you know, they look like balaclavas. Oh, they're absolutely, I mean, they are menacing. But strange enough, the police don't stop that lot. They tend to stop the little boys who are coming from school who look half decent and just look, just stop them just because, just because they might be talking to a friend, they might be stopping on the street. It's almost like they're saying, don't stop on the street move on. So a few little tips I have because especially with the S60 which is still in effect which means they can stop and search anyone at any time without a reason. So um, how to how the police stereotype the appearance like I said hoodies, dark clothes, sunglasses and caps. Sunglasses, that that usually means, I mean, we've taught that it means you've got something to hide, especially when it's not sunny. 
You know, you get people in houses and in nightclubs wearing sunglasses. What's that about? How can you wear sunglasses in a nightclub when it's dark? But you get people who do that and it does look menacing. It, it's not attractive. It's not cool. I don't know where they picked up that stuff from. I think they picked it up from some of these old American movies. But, you know, they always say, I used to um, do a channel and it was called Dark Shades. And I always used to wear these dark shades. And somebody said, you know, I wouldn't trust what you say because you've got dark shades on and I can't see your eyes. And that is what happens. Sometimes you, if you can't see someone's eyes, which is the windows to their soul, you tend not to trust what they say. And some of the glasses are so dark you can't even see through them. And if, if, it's, if it's not if the sun ain't shining... Why have you got dark glasses on? So, yeah, so those are the kind of things you need to stay away from because the police kind of cue it to mean that person's got something to hide. You know, mysterious looking. Okay, loitering on corners. Well, we all, in, we, you know, you don't find so much big men doing that now, but you still follow young boys. Sometimes they're not even loitering in corners. They're loitering outside McDonald's or those kind of places. So they have to be careful because they will be targeted. And parents need to tell their children, you know, they don't, why don't they meet in the library? If they want to have a chat and they don't want to go straight home, I mean, I know you're not supposed to talk in the library, but maybe they're somewhere else. Maybe you can go to, you know, they have um, bowling alleys or something. You know, you don't have to be on the street. And I think some of these guys, they're on the street looking for women, but that's not the way to do it. You're going to attract, instead of attracting women, you're going to attract the police. And on the street during the day, that's another thing that they look out for. Because a lot of them, you know, you get um, boys who have been um, excluded from school. And technically, they're not supposed to be on the street between nine and four, between school hours. So when you see young boys on the street during the week and they're not at school, that draws attention to the police. So you have to be careful about that too. Because they're either supposed to be in this replacement um, school system or they're supposed to be at home and their parents are supposed to be giving them um, home tuition but they're not supposed to be on the street so that sends alarm bells to police um, sh sharing in public yeah you know so you get some people you know they're they look shift well they look shifty to the untrained eye passing things around you know amongst each other that will draw attention to the police the police will think you're passing drugs so you know it's not good you know it's not good to do things like that in the open it might be totally innocent you might be giving somebody some money to go and buy um a coke but it doesn't matter from the police perspective they think you're part you're doing something illegal they already stereotype and say you know the majority of young black youths are doing something illegal so don't give them something to talk about or something to stop you for or something to search you for if you're going to go and get a drink go to the shops together and get the drink don't pass no money out in public so the police think you're passing drugs. Next thing you know, they're holding you up against a wall and searching you and accusing you of throwing the drugs away when all you were doing is giving somebody a couple of quid to get you a Coke. You've got to be so careful about the signs and the signals. It might be innocent to some people, but to the police, they're looking at every little thing that looks suspicious because it's based on suspicious suspicions why they stop and search driving haphazardly yes you know some you know sometimes i don't know wh why you might be driving haphazardly but that could mean you're under the influence of anything drugs drink tired whatever that will draw attention to the police and so it should because that can cause accidents standing up in groups yeah you know standing up in groups you know they're wondering what you're planning are you planning the next robbery, the next major crime? And the funny thing is, it, depending on who it is, one set of groups are more threatening than the other. 
you see a, a group of black guys, it's more threatening to, than seeing a group of white guys for some reason. Walking too fast. You'll think this is, you think I'm crazy, right? I know you do. But walking too fast, what's he running away from? What, you know, what's he been up to? Why is he walking so fast? You know, these are kind of, it raises suspicion. You could be late for an appointment. But you look a certain way and you're not dressed in the way and you've got those dark glasses on and you're walking fast, stepping it, trotting it up the road. They're going to think you've nicked something from the shop or something. They're not going to believe that you're just innocently just running for a job interview or you're late for an appointment. Um, shuffling too slow. <laughs> Same kind of thing because you could be walking too slow you know, what is he on? Is he on drugs? Is it the drugs that are holding him back that's making him look less motivated? i tell you something. Please look for any kind of thing that looks suspicious. I mean, I believe that when you're on the street, you have a sense of purpose. You have a sense of direction. You're not on the street just for the hell of being on the street. You're not on the street just to hang out with your mates or your friends. You have a purpose. You go in the street, you want to buy something, you buy something, you, you, you go home. You have a sense of purpose. But all this loitering and hanging around and slouching around, it will draw negative attention. And that's not what you want. So we're trying to make you not look like a criminal. You you don't you have to be a criminal. You're not a criminal, but you may look like one to people who are suspicious of you anyway. So um, criminally negligent because it refers to an objective standard of behaviour expected of the defendant, civilian, and does not refer to their mental state. There's something wrong with you. I'm not even quite sure why I put that down, to be honest. But yeah, you know, a lot of times, you know, you don't know why the police stop you. You're, as far as you're concerned, I'm just talking to my mates. I'm just, you know, having fun, you know, I'm just having a laugh, just chatting up a few girls. But you can't do that anymore. You need to have a sense of purpose, sense of direction know what you're doing. If you're not at school, stay at home or go to the library, leave from the library, go home. There's two of you, it's fine. Two of you, both of you have a sense of purpose. Both of you are dressed in a way that doesn't draw attention to yourself. It's hard because you'll feel as though you're being controlled, but the whole world is being controlled. We're all being controlled in one way or another. None of us are free beings. So it's an illusion if you think you have control over your life. You don't. We're programmed, we're conditioned, we need to conform if we want to have a peaceful life. And you have a few creative people who can get away with it, people in the limelight, people who are rich, but the general John Joe, you just better just, you know, mingle in and become like the Stepford wives. Everybody looks alike. Have your little pair of trousers, your little shirt, your little shoes. You walk along, nobody troubles you. Maybe that's not like the life you want. Maybe you do want a little bit of excitement. Maybe you do um, like the police intervention. Maybe you do like the challenge. Sometimes for kids especially, their home life isn't great. You know, and that's why they're on the street. They've got no support at home. They've got no attention, no love, no encouragement. And that's why they go on the street. They get that from their friends or they get that from the drug dealer or whoever. But regardless, I'm just sending this out there so people know why sometimes they're stopped by police. And that's all for now. Bye bye.